my name is Lida Kuth. I am the executive director of the Left Foundation. And I'm just going to start by introducing um, to the stu our two staff members. There's Jen Carmel, the program director, and Matthew LaPaglia, who's our program officer. And those two are going to be the ones to kind of walk us through this info session. And I'm just going to share a few brief words to get us started. Um, going to that next slide. <laughs> Um, you'll see down there at the bottom that uh, we have been doing this work since 2001, which is like 22 years. And what is distinct about us in this uh, ecology of support for independent media is that we're regionally focused. And that's allowed us to, you know, support, instead of just projects, we have been able to support a community over time which has a lot of meaning to us. And um, you'll see that um, from the website, you may have noted that there are other ways besides our grant making that we have provided support such as fellowships or other partnerships. And this is our way of kind of trying to broaden and deepen um, how we are a participant in this community. Um, and I wanted to just say that, um, you know, rather than saying, oh my God, it's been so long, I, I, I actually want to say I'm, I feel proud that um, we've been doing the work we've been doing for, you know, 22 years and sort of proud to say that we have remained very consistent in terms of what our focus is, which is to support production of work. And we've also um, had a process, a review process that has also remained, which you'll hear more about. In, but also evolved over time. So um, I think, I, I like to think that in this fast moving world that some predictability is, is not, is kind of a value and not such, not a bad thing at all. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I, like I said, I represent, I recognize some faces here and there are lots of new names, which is great because really you represent our future work and, um, that our opportunity to keep doing the work that we do. Um, and I, I hope that um, we do uh, meet you and do form relationship um, with you and the work that you're doing. Um, I, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Matthew, who's gonna share some housekeeping, but I just wanted to say that I'm very confident that you will leave this hour with a more nuanced, um, understanding of what motivates us and um, also our process. So let me turn that over to Matthew. Thanks, Lida. Yeah. Uh, yes, and thank you all for being here and wherever you are in, in New England or beyond, I suppose. Um, hope you're staying cool and dry. Um, like Lida said, a few housekeeping things before we kick it off. Um, firstly, a detailed version of these slides um, will be shared with you uh, after this. So don't feel like you need to um, madly write down everything that is being um, that is on screen. Uh, secondly, um, just for the sake of moving through the info session, we're going to save questions for the end. Um, that doesn't mean you can't put things in the chat at any point, and we will uh, start sort of the Q&A portion with those questions in the chat. Um, and thirdly, uh, this is being recorded, which I'm sure you were prom prompted about when you joined, and Lida mentioned this. We plan to share this recording as well for people to refer back to. Um, if you're worried about being in the recording, um, as long as you're on mute, you should be all set. The only face that shows up in the recording is the person talking. So. Um, it'll probably just be my lovely face and Jen's lovely face and Lida's lovely face in that recording. Um, I think that is all for housekeeping. Um, and with that, I'm going to jump into our first slide here um, and start by talking about some eligibility requirements. Um, firstly, there's a runtime requirement. So we are looking for projects that are feature length by our definition, which is 40 minutes or more. Um, for residents, the director and or primary creative producer must reside in New England, so one of the six New England states. Um, 
bonus points, extra credit, if you can name them all. <laughs> um, student status is another requirement. Um, so projects with directors or producers in enrolled in high school, um, undergraduate or master's degree programs uh, at the time of application are ineligible for this grant opportunity. For format, we're looking for multi channel, we're not looking for multi channel or installation work. Um, so something that will be exhibited um, or on the screen for an audience. Um, for fiscal sponsorship, you don't need a confirmed fiscal sponsor when you're applying, but if you are awarded a grant, you'll need one um, to receive those that that grant funding. For anyone who has been funded by left before, uh, we require a final report um, on the previous left grant funding that you received, you can access that um, that final report through our website. There's a page called for MIF grantees. Should be easy to find. If it's not, it's linked within the application and you can always reach out to me or to Jen. Um, and so the other requirement, which we'll definitely expand upon more for pre-production, a current work sample is required. For early development, we require two past work samples. Um, and current work samples aren't accepted for these early development applications. Um, so to talk about funding criteria, at the bottom here, I'm going to turn it over to Jen. Thank you. And nice to see everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, so the Left Moving Image Fund has four funding criteria, which are quality of cinematic form and technique, originality of the filmmaker's voice, vision, and point of view, resonance and power of the core story or idea, and feasibility of production. So these are all very broad, you know, and obviously we embrace the subjectivity of, of these criteria. Um, we really invite our peer reviewers to engage with them using um, their understanding of what each applicant's artistic universe is in which they're creating their, their project. Um, we do wanna offer some um, potential ways of thinking about each of the criteria, if that's helpful. For uh, quality of cinematic form and technique, this definitely goes beyond, you know, having like quote unquote high production values for us. This is about how my image making process meaningfully relates to my project's core ideas and questions. Um, for originality of the filmmaker's voice, vision, and point of view, this is about you know, what, what is my unique perspective, my unique positionality um, on this subject matter that my work is about, and how will my project contribute to an existing dialogue or an area of understanding. For resonance and power of the core story or idea, um, LEF has funded projects that are about big sweeping issues and also projects that are very specific, very personal. Um, regardless of the scope of the project, uh, a way of thinking about this criterion is how will my project provoke questions for individual reflection or collective reflection? And the last criterion is feasibility of production. Um, and obviously this is a, and th these grants are earlier stage grants at pre-production and early development. So we know that a lot of these details may shift. Um, that's totally fine. Um, the question to sort of consider is, is my proposed team, my proposed budget, and my proposed timeline all aligned to achieve what I'm hoping to? So that's a little bit about the funding criteria. I'm going to turn it back over to Matthew to talk about what's a good fit and what's not a good fit for the Moving Image Fund. Thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, so what is a good fit for the Moving Image Fund? Um, first and foremost, it's nonfiction filmmaking or documentary cinema as creative expression. Um, a, you know, part of that is the next one, artistic risk taking and experimentation. Um, certainly a form that creative expression can take and it's one that Lef has definitely championed um, through the M Moving Image Fund. Uh, so if you think your project is is pushing sort of the conventions of what documentary is. Um, don't be deterred by that. That should be a good sign that um, it might, you know, find a home through moving, moving image fund support. Uh, as far as any topic or subject matter, um, it can be anywhere. It can be broad or personal. 
as Jen alluded to, um, there's really no scope um, that we prioritize. Uh, it's also important to mention that we we instruct our reviewers to stay open to many different um, styles, approaches, a diversity of modes, and and just filmmaking in general. And then for all levels, for levels of experience, we are um, certainly excited about all of them. So if you're a first time filmmaker or a more experienced filmmaker, we encourage you to apply. Um, and as a note, LEF doesn't prioritize uh, filmmakers or projects that have been supported in the past. So if you're worried that, you know, this is your first time applying to LEF and you're fresh on the, the moving image fund scene, um, that is not, uh, that won't be to your disadvantage by any means. So for what is not a good fit for the moving image fund on the flip side of things, um, of course, filmmakers and projects that don't meet the eligibility requirements that I went over in the last slide, um, and also proposals that don't demonstrate how the project aligns with the funding criteria that Jen laid out. Um, other things that aren't great fits, branded projects or work for hire projects on behalf of a company or organization, um, as well as projects that use film and video um, as documentation and not as cinema. So this would be um, like oral history documentation or um, performance documentation, that sort of thing. Uh, moving ahead, uh, Jen is going to talk a little bit about um, what is unique to LEF's process. Thank you. So um, the first item here is that LEF uses a set of standardized grant questions for um, uh, documentary filmmakers. This is a collaborative effort that we um, are involved in uh, with a group of other funders. It's called the Nonfiction Core Application. So um, the intention is for it to be easier for filmmakers to apply for multiple funds at or around the same time by submitting the same, you know, formatted questions um, to multiple funders. So that's one aspect of LEFT's process that we're really happy and, and, um, and proud of. Um, and another aspect is we can, even though we're small and we're a regional funder, we have a very small team, you're looking at all three of us, we are really happy to answer any questions ahead of time. If there's um, something, you know, uh, that you're not finding the answer to on our website, please feel free to reach out to us. You can call us, you can email us, and we can try to address that for you. We can also accept um, and consider accessibility accommodations if the, the format of this application form um, is a barrier for you applying. We can talk through other alternative ways to submit an application. Um, something that LEF is also very proud of is we are really committed to offering peer review feedback after decisions are made. So um, any applicant uh, can request a one-on-one -on -one phone call with me to talk through what the peer review responses were to their application. And we hope that this is helpful and informative um, as filmmakers might continue to prepare applications um, for other funders and maybe just as uh, additional insight into their creative process and how people are responding to that. We do find it really important to keep the decision-making process as diverse and as dynamic as possible. So for that reason, we also um, have different uh, invited external peer reviewers from in and outside of New England who take part in the process at every round. And um, as Lida was mentioning at the start, in addition to the Moving Image Fund, we also offer um, three different fellowship programs that we partner on with, with local organizations. Um, the Flaherty, the uh, Harvard Film Study Center, and Points North Institute, and you can find more about find out more about those opportunities on our website. And even beyond the fellowship opportunities, if there if there are other resources that you're looking for, we um, do have a resources page on our website, and we send out a monthly newsletter with upcoming deadlines um, for documentary filmmakers. So if you are not aware of that, definitely check that out. And I think that might cover it for this. And I will um, 
turn it back over to Matthew, who's going to talk about deadlines and the review timeline. Wonderful. Thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, so timeline. Uh, if you're familiar with Moving Image Fund and LEF already, you might have noticed that this year is a little bit different. We've pushed this pre-production and early development grant cycle a little bit later. Um, so the deadline is in August, on August 7th specifically, um, and grant decisions will be made in early October. Um, for, for these grants, uh, we plan to award six uh, early development grants of $2,500 each and six pre-production grants of $5,000 each. Um, the next Moving Image Fund grant cycle won't be until later in the fall. Um, that will be for projects in production and post-production. Uh, the letter of inquiry deadline will be in late November, um, at, or sorry, they'll open up in November and the deadline will be January 19th, 2024. Um, and yes, those production grants are for 15,000 and post-production grants are for 25,000. Those are post-production grants are only open to um, prior left grantees. So if you've been funded in a previous uh, phase, um, I think that's it for timeline that should cover it. Um, and I'm gonna hand it back over to Jen to sort of kick us off talking about the applications themselves. Thank you. So um, previously I mentioned the nonfiction core application, this standardized set of application questions that we um, use in the Moving Image Fund application. The nonfiction core application was started in 2015 or 2016. We, we came on board to adopt those questions um, pretty soon after it was started. Uh, more recently, within the past year, all of the um, funders who make use of the nonfiction core revisited the questions together and through a collaborative process, you know, um, made some changes and updates. So you'll see those updated and additional questions on these forms. Um, a few of the additional questions relate to um, filmmakers' relationships with their participants. Um, so this is an opportunity to expand a little bit more on um, your approaches to access, accountability, and community care in your projects. And um, uh, a suggested resource here, which we wanted to recommend is the Documentary Accountability Working Group, which has some suggested um, uh, points for reflection on, um, uh, you know, before you film, while you're filming, and afterward, how to, how to think about um, working with participants. So um, you'll, and you'll receive the, the link to this uh, in the slides after, um, after this info session. So I think that is all I wanted to share about that updated nonfiction core app. I'm going to pass it back to Matthew to talk about the specific questions on the form. Thank you, Jen. Um, yeah, so as far as the applications go, um, the pre-production form and early development form are essentially identical. Um, the main difference, if not the only difference, um, is the work sample information, um, which is here. I've mentioned this already, um, and I will talk more about it here, um, but it's going to be more in depth later. So I keep pushing it off, but we'll get there. Um, to start off both of the forms, uh, ask for some basic information. So applicant contact, fiscal sponsor contact, if you have one secured already, um, and then some really short responses. So uh, project title, website, if you have one, um, estimated runtime as well. Um, and as a reminder, this should be 40 minutes or more. We know, you know, these are very early projects and anything could happen in either the, you know, shooting or the editing. Um, but as long as you're aiming for that 40 minute mark or more, um, you should be all set. The, the bulk of the applications um, consists of these longer answer questions, um, which I think it would be helpful to go over um, a little bit, just so they're familiar to you. As Jen mentioned, they're based on the nonfiction core application. So if you're familiar with that, um, you should be familiar with them already. Um, and also descriptions for each of these are available within the form itself. So don't feel like you have to remember um, exactly what these are. There's helpful, hopefully helpful guidance um, for each question. Uh, to start off, 
we're asking um, for some project description. Uh, that is a log line. So this is just a brief summary of the project, a couple of sentences. Um, and then in the story or concept summary, this is uh, to kind of expand upon that and start thinking about what, uh, what are the primary story arcs of this project or what are the uh, questions and ideas that you're working through uh, with this film and your filmmaking process. Um, to expand on that, maybe even a little bit more, the artistic approach. This is about um, what your vision is, your creative vision for this project and how you plan to fulfill that, that creative vision um, through specific uh, visual or audio elements. Um, and this is a chance to really start to um, explain how your film will uh, look and sound and feel to watch what will be the experience like to, um, to enjoy your film. For topic summary, the next one, this is, um, this is very much about the context for the film. So what are the, uh, the issues and the stakes and the themes that um, are relevant to this film as far as the, like the social and cultural, um, historical, political context? So where does the film kind of fit in? Um, especially if there have been films about this topic, uh, how is your film in conversation with those, or how does it fit into a, a lineage of this, this material? Authorship, access, and accountability. This is the first year that this question appears on these forms, and it's based on those updates to the nonfiction core that Jen was talking about. This is an opportunity to talk about your, um, your access to the material and your relationship to um, the topic, to the participants. Also, um, what is the unique lens that you're bringing as the person making this film um, to the material? Uh, it's also, if it's relevant to your project, this is where um, you would address uh, your approach to, to consent and transparency and feedback with your participants. For creative control, um, who has it? Uh, also, if it's relevant, like who will have ownership of the project? Um, or who does have ownership of these ideas or these materials. Um, community care and safety. How do you plan to keep um, your film participants, uh, the communities you're working with, um, and the film, you know, the film team itself safe physically, mentally, emotionally? Um, what is your, you know, what is your ethics of care through this? If COVID-19 has been um, an has impacted your production or you expect it will, um, this is where you can talk about that as well. Project stage and timeline is the next one. Um, somewhat straightforward, what is the current status of the project and what is your anticipated timeline uh, through completion? For key creative personnel, um, these will be short bios uh, and they don't have to be limited to the just the director and the producer. If you think it will be helpful for reviewers to know a little bit more about um, your cinematographer or your editor or certain consultants you're working with, um, anyone on that creative team, um, you can include a short bio. The next sort of section within these forms is the audience and distribution bit. So firstly, there's audience consideration. Um, this is not only who you expect your audience to be, but how you are making choices as a filmmaker to speak to them. Um, as far as accessibility, uh, this is how you are um, thinking about making your film both in development through production and distribution, how you're planning to make it accessible for deaf, blind, um, disabled, and neurodivergent folks. Uh, we totally understand that this often requires some additional expenses. Um, totally expected. And also we encourage you to reflect that in your budget, just to show that you have started thinking about these accommodations. Um, a really great resource for thinking about these if you're not um, as familiar or new to it, um, Forward Doc, their website has a lot of resources. Um, and that link will be included in these slides that we share with you. Moving on to distribution and marketing. Um, how do you want your film to make it out into the world. Uh, this could be festivals or community screenings or broadcast or streaming, um, anything like that. What is your, what is your plan um, for intended impact? The next bit here, 
uh, is this, if it's applicable to your project, but how do you, what is the impact do you expect your film to have? Um, and that can be on the participants and the communities you're working with, but also on, you know, the general public. If you're planning an impact campaign, um, how are you, how are you developing that? You can include that here. For fundraising, this next section, um, fundraising strategy, how do you plan to uh, raise the funds needed to um, complete the project? Funding to date, this is where you would include funding you've secured, uh, funding you're currently applying for, and funding you plan to apply for. Those last two um, are really important for these earlier stage grants. Um, obviously, we don't expect you to have done a significant amount of, of fundraising yet. This is especially true for early development. But this is um, this is a chance where you can show that you're you're starting to think about what other funding priorities your project might fit into, and what other organizations um, or institutions would be interested in supporting this project. Um, doing your research here is really is really beneficial. For grant impact, that is just wondering how will this moving image fund grant further your project. Um, one of the uploads. Uh, actually, the only required upload is a full line item budget. Um, Jen is going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment, so I'm not going to spend too much time. Uh, work sample information, like I said, we're going to do a deeper dive in a moment. I keep delaying this, <laughs> but we will get there. Um, right now, I'll just mention that this asks for a link uh, that will be viewable through October, um, as well as a password if necessary. Um, a time code if it's longer than 10 minutes, uh, shooting format, and a brief description. Again, we're going to flesh this out some more. Um, previous left support information, this is just asking uh, if you have received left support through a grant or a fellowship opportunity in the last three years. And last but not least, supplementary materials. These are optional. Um, they can include resumes, uh, press pieces, articles, a pitch deck, um, images, anything that's informing the development of the film and anything you expect to continue to inform it as you continue making. Um, a note about these materials, though, reviewers are not required to, um, to review them, but uh, if someone's on the fence or has some lingering questions, these can be really helpful um, and clarifying uh, for reviewers. So hopefully that wasn't way too much to digest. Um, if you've had questions, maybe you've jotted them down or, or entered them into the chat, also great. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely get to those. But in the meantime, I'm gonna hand it over to Jen to talk a little bit more about budgets. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Matthew. Um, for budgets at this stage, both at the pre-production round and the early development round. As Matthew mentioned, um, LEF does require a full line item budget. Some people may already have this, some people may not. It's totally fine if you already have a budget to share what you've already come up with. Maybe it's something that you've submitted to other funders, it's just something for your, for your own planning. Um, and you don't need to use the left template it, in whatever format um, you have it already. And then for um, those who do not have a budget drafted already um, in this amount of, of detail, left does offer a template that you can find and download on our website. And it's, it's meant to be something that's completely editable and just sort of a starting point, a launching pad for um, continuing to, to plan um, potential costs or any or to track any costs that you might have already incurred. Um, if you're looking for more guidance on, on budgeting, um, another resource we can share in the more detailed slides afterwards, the International Documentary Association, IDA, they have a documentary budgeting guide that's very comprehensive and that can really allow for you to plug and play and eliminate any line items that are not relevant to your project. Um, and I found that really helpful in the past. Um, 
You are welcome to include any notes for additional context in your budget if you feel like something might be unclear or sort of unusual in your budget. Um, you're not required to add additional contextual notes, but if you want to do that, you're welcome to. Um, overall, you know, I know different funders may have different um, perspectives on this, but for LEF, we are really interested in seeing your, what we call your plan A budget. Um, you know, the, the, budget, the budget that would really cover all of the costs for your project, for your, your team, even if you don't have everyone on your team confirmed yet, given it's so, it's so early. So really not um, cutting any corners or holding back uh, is important. We want to understand what you um, know will be required in order to make this film if it's fully funded. Um, the uh, funding to date section that Matthew mentioned before is also something that can appear in more detail in your in your budget. In the left template, we, we include a section here where you can list um, potential pending or secured funding. Um, again, we don't expect anyone at these early stages to have secured maybe even any funding yet. Um, left might be the first funding that you're seeking for your project. And that's great and really exciting for us to see. Um, but you can include any secured funding, um, anything that's pending if you have other grant applications in that you're waiting to hear back about, um, and potential. So there might be a longer list of potential funding sources if you've done research on what other grant opportunities am I eligible for? Am I going to do a crowdfunding campaign? Am I going to seek individual donations? Maybe um, broadcast license? Um, really anything here that you're considering as a part of your fundraising strategy. And that really helps the reviewers to understand, you know, even at this early stage, how you are navigating this process and figuring out how you might potentially cover all of these costs that would go into your project. Um, again, we really want you to prioritize pay for yourself or your team and the costs of just taking care of everyone who is a part of this project, of accessibility for everyone um, who will be contributing to the project's production and also um, for um, uh, maybe any pre-planning for the, the distribution um, aspect. Um, definitely consider whether for your project it might be appropriate to offer pay or in-kind support for your film participants. I know um, there is a lot of conversation about this, but for some projects it may actually be um, worth considering, whereas for others it may not. Um, and one other note about uh, Matthew actually already mentioned this, but Forward Doc, which is um, documentary filmmakers with disabilities, it's it's this um, group that has a um, list of resources for um, thinking about accessibility in filmmaking and includes some um, budgeting resources as well. So uh, we will include that link in the slides that we share with you afterward. Um, one, maybe one other final note that I forgot to share before is it's early. Your best estimates are totally fine. So we're not expecting for any of these costs, you know, to be set in stone. So, um, okay, I think I'm gonna hand it back over to Matthew to talk about work samples. Yes, finally we've made it to work sample. Um, hopefully we're rejoicing. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, where the pre-production and early development applications diverge. Um, so if you're maybe on the fence with your project and not sure um, which phase of production you should be aiming for, um, the thing to keep in mind is that pre-production requires a current work sample from the project that you're applying with, and early development asks for two past, two completed past work samples. So if you've done some shooting already for your project and you feel that you can assemble this into up to 10 minutes of footage that is representative of, you know, your vision for this project, uh, pre-production would be, you know, where you should aim. 
if um, you haven't done any shooting yet or you don't feel like you could uh, represent your project in a work sample, um, it's, it's good to go for early development um, because again, that just asks, asks for past work. Um, let's dive into current work sample a bit. Uh, this should be um, key moments from this project. That can mean it's research footage or character sketches or um, even rough scenes if you if you have those. Uh, it can demonstrate access to participants, to materials, um, and it could also just be demonstrating uh, your visual treatments um, or the developing um, tone and style of the project. Again, it's early, um, so this very much can be developing. What's important here is that the current work sample uh, reflects you know, this vision for the completed film. Um, it should uh, also complement everything that you've written about so beautifully as well. Um, those two things should work together. Something else to keep in mind about current work samples, um, you're welcome to submit an existing sample you have if maybe you've sent it to other funders as well. Um, the only thing there is if it's longer than 10 minutes, uh, we'll ask that you include a time segment to review um, that is up to 10 minutes. It can be um, one big chunk of 10 minutes or it can be smaller pieces of a couple minutes here and there, as long as those don't um, total to more than 10 minutes. Uh, and lastly, this current work sample, um, it is okay if it is comprised of entirely archival material. Um, if that is a texture or um, a format or just contains content that will be very important to your film, it could also be a chance to demonstrate um, editing techniques and that developing tone that I mentioned. Um, let's jump down to things to avoid in these current work samples. It's really anything that doesn't communicate um, this vision of the project. Um, these are things like fundraising trailers, slideshows of film stills, um, and crowdfunding pitch videos as well. We love to see your faces and see your enthusiasm about the project and commitment to getting it over the finish line. Um, but what we're really interested in is seeing, you know, this filmmaking in action. Um, you can, you can include all of that really helpful information in these written responses. For pre-production, um, there's an option to include a past work sample as well. Um, but to talk about past work samples, let's think about early development where they are required. Um, as I mentioned, two of them. Uh, and the thing that past work samples um, ideally contain are, uh, these past interests that you've had. Um, of course, your experience uh, working with film um, and or any new directions. So what that means is how, how is this current film that you're applying with? How is it either building on this past work or, or departing from this work, introducing something new into um, what interests you and what um, how you make films, anything like that. And this is where uh, the sample description within the application becomes really important. Um, you can write about uh, these past works and con contextualize them uh, and, and just talk more about what you would expect for viewers to glean from them as it relates to uh, this, this current project. Um, again, if, uh, if the link you're including is longer than 10 minutes, which if it's a completed film, there's a, you know, a decent chance of that. Um, just include the time segment. Uh, reviewers are only required to watch um, up to 10 minutes. So anything over that, there's there's no guarantee that it would be uh, seen and reviewed. Um, and lastly, for these past work samples, it is okay if um, this past work wasn't made by um, you, the person applying, or the director, um, or you know a producer's past work. It could be your cinematographer's past work. Um, something like that. Uh, and again, you can contextualize, you know, why you included it um, in that project uh, sample description. Um, I think that is it for work samples. I feel like I built it up and then I, I blew through it. So if there are questions, again, um, we'll get to those shortly. Um, and yeah, to, 
to close us out, I will hand it back over to Jen to just talk about some other considerations. Thank you. So some final recommendations from us. Before you apply, if you're considering applying, definitely just double check, triple check the guidelines on our website. Make sure you, know, you can determine that you're eligible. And if you have any questions about that, we, we want to make sure you reach out to us um, to make sure that you're eligible before you spend time working on a proposal. You can also read our frequently asked questions before you reach out to us to make sure your, your question isn't already addressed there. Um, and let us know if you need to request uh, an accessibility accommodation in order to apply in an alternative way that's not through this application form, if the form is a barrier for you to apply. Now, if you have determined that you're eligible, you're definitely going to go for it. You're going to prepare an application. Um, it's great if you're already attending this info session, because that means you um, started early and you have time to pace yourself to give yourself time. If you haven't written anything yet to write and then go back and revise, um, you can draft your responses on our application platform, submittable, and save them there. We do also recommend saving them somewhere else offline, just in case you have any interruptions in your internet. We would hate for anyone to lose their work. Um, one question that comes up is sort of what is the tone that is sort of expected in a grant proposal? I think we would just say to, yeah, be yourself, be honest and to the point. Um, not We're not expecting anything, you know, more, um, uh, than that and to give a sense of of where you're coming from and inviting us into this um, creative project that is in development which is very um, uh, uh, early and as Matthew mentioned before um, maybe after you've sort of identified what you are thinking would be um, the material to share for your sample and or samples and what um, uh, your sort of drafting or revising for your written proposal to then take a step back and think about how they're complementing one another side by side. Are there any kind of um, uh, big unanswered questions that maybe the um, that might come up that the sample could address that the proposal doesn't or vice versa? Um, this is also something where you could you could ask for some outside feedback from a, a trusted peer, uh, maybe another filmmaker, someone who's applied for grants before. Um, we would definitely recommend giving yourself that time to get an outside perspective because you will eventually be getting peer reviewer perspectives through the decision making process, and um, that could be an opportunity to to hear um, if your intentions are being expressed as you want them to. So I think that that may be it. And I think we can, um, first of all, just say thank you to everyone for staying with us through this. And we're going to move on to questions now.